body shot. He is a knockout machine. Jamie McDonald, two-time world champion. Wow, out of nowhere. It's all quick, it's all accurate. Scott Quigg has wiped him out. That was clinical, that was brutal, that. Oh, beautiful oh, shot. Beautiful shot. shot. Joshua zeroing in, absolutely destroyed him. The rematch everybody wants to see. Oh, Bellew nails it. A fantastic lineup for British boxing stars. And plenty of programs ahead on fight week. We've got the big fight tactics and two episodes of Behind the Ropes. That's our 24-7 access to both fighters' camps. Ringside. And then the final countdown, and then Saturday night. A special event live on Sky Sports box office from 6 o'clock. Callum Smith, Jamie McDonald, Scott Quigg, James Aguil, George Groves, Anthony Joshua, and then the big one, Cleveland Bell, who aimed to settle their feud once and for all. Can't wait for that. Here in Dublin, it's main event time now, and an important fight and now in the career of Matthew Macklin. Macklin's entrance coming shortly, but first, Ed's with a man who knows him better than most. That's right, as well as being his trainer for a while until quite recently, you also beat Matthew Macklin back in the day in a real humdinger of a fight. How good do you think he is? Uh, listen, he's, he's a world-class fighter and has been for some years. Um, he won the Felix Stern fight in my book. He's very unfortunate, unfortunate not to get the decision. So he's a world-class fighter. And, you know, in this fight now, he has, he's got to bring his experience into, into the equation. You know, he's, he's been on the road for many years, you know, based himself in America for a few years. Um, so he's picked up vast amount of experience, which he's, he's going to have to use in this fight. You know, Halen's a southpaw. He's, uh, he's got good hand speed, uh, lets his punches go in bunches, but he does make mistakes. He leaves his chin in the air when, when he lets them go, and um, he has been dropped a couple of times. So the stuff what he, Matt can take from um, Halen's previous fights into this fight and use to his advantage. We've seen Matthew Fox very, very well at times. We've also seen him struggle against lesser opposition. Jose Yebes last time out in Germany, he didn't look like a world-class fighter that night. No, exactly. And one of, one of Matt's biggest problems is actually one of his biggest assets, and that's his mental strength. So when, when, when he doesn't feel like the challenge is in front of him, he, he, he can't get up for it. He needs those feelings, especially at this stage of his career. You know, he's 32 and he's been through some, some real tough fights, but he's, he's an emotional sort of fighter and he needs the feeling inside him. He needs to feel under threat to, to perform. And this fight will should bring the best out of him. I believe it will bring the best out of him because this is sort of, you know, make or break now for him. He's in against a, a world-class fighter who, if he doesn't beat, where does he go from there? So he's got his back against the wall. Do you think he can win a world title? He's had three unsuccessful attempts. Definitely, I really do. You know, in my book, he should have beat Felix Sturm. So, you know, potentially he could have been a world champion already. But, you know, if he if he can perform and bring the best out of him tonight, uh, you know, you're talking Miguel Cotto is the, is the world champion. If he can't make a deal with, with Canelo Alvarez, you, you never know, Matt Mackley might get the Cotto fight, Madison Square Garden, St. Patrick's weekend, which is a massive fight. So that's the sort of carrot what's being dangled in front of him tonight, and that's what should make him perform tonight. But he does have to win here, Johnny. Thank you, boys. The crowd are on their feet. The atmosphere is electric. So it's all on the line for Matthew Macklin. The stakes are high. Can he keep his world title dreams alive? Well, let's find out from our MC. Ladies and gentlemen, the time has come for our main event of the evening, 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC International Middleweight Championship. It is an official world title eliminator. Let's welcome the fighters to the ring. Coming up first to the blue corner, Matthew Macklin. Three 
times. He's had a go at the world title against the highest level of opposition three times. In a variety of ways, he's come up short, but still that fire burns. He once said, if I was just British and European champion, I would consider my career a failure. That's how much pressure he's put on himself here tonight. He has to win here to keep hopes of a fourth attempt very much alive and in an ever-changing scene at the top levels of the world middleweight picture. If he does get that win, he's given himself every chance. It was interesting to hear Jamie Moore talk there because we saw his last fight, Jim, in Germany, and he was so under-motivated, wasn't he? He won't be under-motivated tonight because he's put so much pressure on himself. He said it himself. His whole career is on the line. In Deutschland, I mean, Matthew Schoen is in the past having rises to the occasion. Terrific performances against Billy Stewart and, uh, and Martinez. Superb in both of those nights. He's had a tough career. He's 32 years old. There are a lot of fighters who move into their 30s. Maybe changed their style a little bit. Matthew hasn't done that. He still wants to do it in all out aggression. And uh, work at a terrific pace. But this, this is a tricky one for him tonight. He faces an awkward southpaw who is tough. A man who's never been stopped. Who's pretty mobile and will pose a lot of problems. But Matthew Macklin at his best should be a different class to Jorge Highland. So hopefully we see the best of Matthew Macklin tonight. Southpaws come in all shapes and forms. Sometimes you've got awkward Southpaws who are a nightmare to box. I don't think Highland is one of those. But he's shifty, he's quick, he's mobile, and he's tough. He's proved that already. There's nothing on his record to, that, that Matthew Macklin should worry about. But the guy is awkward, he's tough to look good against, and Macklin might have a few frustrating rounds before he gets his show on the road. But this is a huge night for both men here. Ranked at 32, five years older than Highland. They're both uh, ranked in the top six by the WBC. Highland, incidentally, ranked number four. Macklin is down at number six. Both looked good on the scales yesterday. Macklin, I thought, looked absolutely terrific at the weigh-in. His body language, very, very positive. And just watching him walking around the ring now as we wait for the formalities. He really does look in a good place. A more fights, boxed at a much, much higher level over the years. Than Highland, as I say, has been outpointed by the likes of Nielsen Julio Tapir and Billy Facundo Hodoy. Not exactly household names, but very, very tough. Macklin is not going to be bombing this fella out of there. He knows it and he's prepared for it. But talking to Seamus, his brother there, talking to Joe Gallagher, the usual story. The camp has gone very, very well, but it's true as well. You, you ask around, how's his camp been? He's been very sharp, very switched on and he's ready. He's put an awful lot of pressure on himself. This is a big, big night in the career of Matthew Macklin.
Ladies and gentlemen, this bout is brought to you by Eddie Hearn for Matchroom Sport, along with Sky Sports, and sponsored by 888 Sport, Scott's Menswear, and MGM Marbella, and sanctioned by the WC. The supervisor is Mauro Betti from Italy. The local supervisor will be Mel Crystal. The three judges for this fight at ringside are Massimo Barbecchio from Italy, Edgardo Cuduti from Argentina, and David Irving from Ireland. Our timekeeper at the bell will be Alex McKenzie. The man in charge of the actions in the ring is our referee from Holland. Please welcome Robert Ferdinand. Ladies and gentlemen, this is it, the main event of the evening. Are you ready? <laughs> Introducing to you first, the father on my right, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the colors of the Irish flag. His official weight, 11 stone, 5 pounds, 8 ounces. He holds a fine record of 36 fights, 31 victories, and 5 defeats including 20 big wins coming by way of a knockout. He's the former Irish, British, and two-time European champion and world title challenger. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the challenger from Birmingham by way of Tate Riley. Who is nothing, not the night, nothing. And introducing his opponent on my left, fighting out of the red corner, wearing orange trunks. His official weight, 11 stone, 4 pounds, 8 ounces. His record stands at 24 wins, 4 defeats and 2 draws, including 12 KO victories. He comes to us from Buenos Aires, Argentina. Ladies and gentlemen, Damas y Caballeros, please welcome the reigning and defending WC International Champion Jorge Sebastian Highland. Okay, guys, you know my instructions, so you know what I expect. Good luck to the both of you. Shake hands. Well, he's been so close, hasn't he? So many people think he beat Felix Sturm that night, didn't get the decision. He boxed so well against Sergio Martinez before being stopped in the 11th. And then, of course, 17 months ago, Gennady Golovkin, that was a different story again. The body shot from Hal took him out in three rounds. Since then, two fights, and he's had a lot of fights fall through as well. He chased Daniel Giel, that didn't happen. He wanted Sturm again, couldn't get that. And he seemed flat and unmotivated, as I say, in September last time we saw him at 6 o'clock in the evening, opening the show in Kiel, Germany, and just really going through the motions. We are not expecting to see that Matthew Macklin tonight. He's been very, very dialed in for this one. And they brought Craig McHugh and the Edinburgh Southpaw down for sparring to, to, to Bolton. And talking to Craig this week, he said he's adapting to the Southpaw style really well. And Craig said his power is absolutely terrific. It's spot on. It's not a bad sparring partner to bring in. Well, I think Macklin knows he can't lead single jabs to, to the southpaw, so he's getting himself close. This is a good start for Macklin. Nice little feints, just trying to, to knock Highland off balance. Then he's moving in with two punches. Single punches will be counter from that southpaw stance, making good use of the right hand there. Just not quite finding the range, but keeping the champion occupied. Taking his time here and not in range. Matthew Macklin loading up with the right hand, missing. And again, just not finding the range at the moment, Hartland. Nor was Macklin there. And you'd expect a few early range finders here from both these fellas. That was better from Macklin. Straight shot, straight right hand to the chest area. Expecting to see a lot of those because the head movement of Highland, as we just saw there, is pretty good. And Joe Gallagher was stressing you've got to work the body with those straight right hands because he's very good with his head, the Argentinian. Just fainting and moving away. Good reflexes. 
And the right hand to the body is a good shot against the southpaw. You know, there's plenty of space there to get the punch through. Well, already, we can see this guy's tough enough. He's prepared to stand his ground with Macklin. Macklin is slightly the busier up to this point. We're into the last minute. Ah, good stuff there from Macklin. Nothing wrong with that right to right the two Oh, good again. And razor sharp again here, Macklin. That's forced a response from Highland. But the defences were good from Macklin. And that right hand ripping through again. Very positive start, this. We're not seeing that head movement from Highland, so straight right hands have landed a couple of times. But he's always coming back with something. He's shown his toughness in this opening round. Macklin probably just done enough to, to get himself off to a good start. But this fellow will not be easily intimidated. See it there. Space. Bump and it goes. So the first round in the book. Round two of twelve. The international title on the line, but much more importantly, the WBC eliminator. The champion Miguel Cotto. A lot of talk that he will move down to light middleweight and a good right hand to the head. And yeah, you're right about that head movement, Jim. I mean it was something that showed up on film and Joe Gallagher certainly talked about it that his reflexes were really good but Matthew Macklin is catching him with these headshots and again this is very encouraging that was good having the last word in the exchanges is important the right hand is really working well for Macklin even when it's blocked it's not he's not allowing Highland to counter it I'd like to see Macklin on the front foot as much as possible you don't want this uh, Awkward southpaw coming forward at you. Well, that's going to be a tough ask because he is a come forward kind of guy. Takes a shot well. That right hand is blocked off. And they're looking to try and step up the pace here a little bit, Highland. Oh, good use of the body shots with the right hand again. Macklin, who really went for broke with the uh, the head shot with the right hand, wasn't there for him. You know, Michael's doing well, he'll land good punches, but he's been forced to do it. You know, he's, he, he doesn't look in command at the moment. You know, he, he's on the counter, he's doing well, nice, good stuff. That was good stuff, that's what he wants to do, get his body weight coming forward with these punches, that's a little bit low. Got away with it. And Highland coming in and looking to try and land some punches of his own here. Some success with that combination, but Macklin has turned him around and finished it off with a hook to the body. Yeah, I like to see Macklin if he can, you know, stand his ground, meet him in the centre of the ring, get his punches off before his back reaches the ropes. He's boxing well on the back foot, though he's countering well. Good defensive work there. Definitely trying to step up the pace here a little bit. See how Macklin does box on the back foot. Not landing with too many clean shots. Another nice little left again, ending the exchange with the last word, as you said, Jim, earlier. Now, this is good work for, from Macklin. You know, he's been forced. He's not uh, controlling the pace here. Highland is the one who's setting this pace. So Macklin's having to react to that, but he's doing it well. Nice little chopping punches up close. This is not the Matthew Macklin we saw in Germany two months ago, Jim. That lot sharper, I think he knows his career is in the balance tonight. Nice tight defence there from Macklin, but a uh, lot of effort from Highland. Shut up. Shut up. Now, 
Uh, the good punches in that round, I thought, came from Macklin, but a couple of uncomfortable moments. He's working so well with the right hand to the head and body, but he has been forced to work at a pace. Yeah, he's asking questions here, the Argentinian. And you can expect he will continue to do so, because as much as we talk about Macklin and his career hanging in the balance, big opportunities here for Highland. This is a fight he has to win. Otherwise, he starts sliding down and possibly out of the picture. And uh, it's Highland that's starting the brighter here. He's just trying to bludgeon his way through Macklin at the moment, throwing a lot of punches. Enough is getting through, and his his corner are getting animated. You know, Nick, I think the problem with uh, Highland might be the physical strength. He looks very strong. He looks able to walk right up to Macklin and push him back. I'm saying I like to see Macklin stand his ground and meet him and head on, but maybe he can't do that. This is a good spell from Highland. Macklin missing with that lead right hand. There's the body shot again and another one and they complained about that one being low in the Highland corner. You know, from this angle it did look low, but the referee had a better view of it than we did and he didn't complain. Ah, good stuff. Right hand again from Macklin. Look at that, Highland has come back. Trying to just penetrate those Macklin defences. It's going to take an awful lot to discourage this Argentinian because Macklin is landing clean and regularly, and Highland getting through with a straight left hand there. What a clever punch. I'm just worried that uh, Highland may be the fresher of the two, Nick. I mean, Matthew Macklin has had a real tough career, some real hard fights before he reached the uh, title level. So is he fresh enough for this fellow, who's, uh, what is it, four, four year, five years younger? A uh, big drive. He's really having some success here, Highland. It's gone very quiet in this arena. And again, getting through with the lead shot, Highland. And threatening to take over the fight and boss it here in this third round. See, even in the earlier rounds, oh, that was better. shot. Even in the earlier, you know, the cut, the second round, when Mac Macklin was doing well, it looked that he was being forced to work. The Highland was the one controlling the pace. That's why I'm worried about the, will he be the fresher of the two. He's put in a lot of good work in this round, Highland. Macklin's smart with the, the little shuffles of feints. Just trying to buy himself some time and room, I think. Catching the body shot. And another one. And this time there is a little warning from the Dutch referee and another body shot sinking those right hands to the body and in the last few seconds of this round. He steadied the ship very well here, Macklin. Because Highland was looking the boss at one point, but Macklin finished that round firmly in control. Some anxious moments for this crowd in that uh, last round, Jim, but... He didn't start it too well, Matthew Macklin. He certainly finished it strongly. Yeah, but he came well, but you know, he came well in the later stages, but too many clean punches were shipped in the early stages. You know, and I just feel that Macklin is having to force a performance here, and we're too early in the fight for that to happen. I was hoping his skills and his experience would be in play at the moment. We're scheduled for 12 rounds and we have three scoring judges as well but we've also got open scoring tonight as well which means at the end of the fourth round we will hear what the scorecards are looks like both these fellas are saying i don't don't care about the cards let's just go for it now this is better from macklin you know he's making the first move i don't know that countering that against this southpaw is the best plan trying to take the initiative macklin Range there, Highland, but he's got Macklin pinned in his corner here. And Macklin again evading the challenge from Highland, who continues to press oh, and make good. Macklin work. But Matthew Macklin is working very well. Now that was good stuff from Macklin. Defensively, he was good, just putting a little burst of punches together. But you just get the feeling, you know, he's under the cosh with this fellow. This fellow really looking so fresh and strong. Hasn't found his accuracy yet, Highland. I'm hoping he doesn't find it. Missing again. 
the body shots not missing from Macklin, but nothing seems to have had much of an effect so far on the Highland Torso. There's an uppercut getting ripped into the mix. Now, there's been some good work in this round from Macklin. Keeping his defences tight. Not, nothing much there getting through from Highland. Oh, Terrific, really sharp from Macklin. But again, Highland takes it so well, doesn't he? And keeps coming back. And a good left to the body forces a response again from Macklin, who is getting really pushed here by Highland. This is where I like to see Macklin, if possible, you know, stand his ground, get his punches off. Good, ah, good stuff again. You know, but before Highland pushes them back to the ropes. Caught him again with the right hand, but Highland again continues just to seemingly walk through. Just a little bit reckless in this round, Highland. There's not a great deal of method in what he's doing. He's, he, you know, he's, he's charging forward, but not really finding the accuracy. About to say, Jim, there's serious accuracy issues. He's just trying to overwhelm Macklin at the moment. Yeah, but I think he feels he's physically strong. A good job there from Macklin. But Macklin again. has taken a lot out of the tank here, but he is producing the goods. He is pouring it on here, Highland. And Macklin is being forced into a, a real tear up now. And definitely a low one went in for Macklin, who's really struggling to contain this fella. Just all action from Jorge Sebastian Highland. The quality coming from Macklin as we're seeing again there. Once again, Macklin finishing the round on top and loving it. Well, he's pouring it on here, isn't he, Highland? Yeah, there wasn't a great deal of method. He was charging forward. Macklin's defences were good. And his countering was good as well, good quality punches. I was worried in the previous round that Highland's youth, strength and freshness was going to be start becoming a problem. But that was a good response from Macklin. But uh, Highland still looks full of fire. Well, they're, they're trying to just uh, tot up the scorecards now. You can see that going on. But uh, they're taking their time. We might we might be running out of time here. Well, we were expecting to hear from the MC there, but it didn't happen. So we go on round five of this 12 rounder. But I've now been handed the piece of paper that the MC couldn't get off in time. One judge has it 38 all, but all three judges have it 38 all. So this one dead level after four on the cards. I've got a 3 1 to Macklin for the, the better quality work. But obviously, they're impressed just by the, the, the sheer aggression of Highland. coming on strong still. But can Macklin find the power to discourage him? Because it, it is a worry, Jim, from a judge's perspective, he's throwing so many punches. And whilst not everything is accurate, enough is getting through, and Macklin is being forced into evasive action here. No, Macklin, I said under the cosh, he was totally under the cosh there. No, Macklin has gone to sleep here, I don't know what is happening. The real worry if this goes deep and it carries on like this more than once in his career. Matthew Macklin has really found the going tough in the later rounds. You think back to Jamie Moore when he was admittedly struggling with weight issues, and then Sergio Martinez, who admittedly is serious world class. But Highland, I'm sure, will want to take a lot of stuffing out of him if he can, and maybe go for a late finish. Now these defenses, I mean, it was good defensive boxing in the previous round, but he's shipping the punches here. Looking heavy legged. No, I've, I've always been worried about the fresh look the Highland has, and he's making that pay now. He has the energy. And Highland pinning him in a corner, trying to, Macklin getting out. And we 
again, those punches coming in from Ireland, they're bouncing off gloves and arms. Well, enough is getting through, and he's certainly going to be catching the eye of the judges with this work rate. Yeah, Macklin, Macklin hasn't produced anything in this round, Nick. Looking heavy-legged. He's looked uncomfortable from the second round, uncomfortable with the pace, and he hasn't been able to use his experience to slow this fellow down and make it his pace of fight. Struggling in this round. You mentioned it earlier, Jim, he's had a hard, hard career, Matthew Macklin. Turned pro as a teenager, 32 these days, and was caught with a painful-looking combination there in the last few seconds of the round. And Matthew Macklin has finished the last couple of rounds on top. He's not finishing this round on top. Gets a left hooking right on the bell, though. But Highland just walks through it and continues just to pound away at him. While we're away, Joe Gallagher just reminded Macklin that it was level after four. And then Gallagher said, I'm giving Highland that last round, as did you, Jim. Yeah, but what worries me is the, the kind of tired, weary look in Macklin's boxing, almost for that complete round. I mean, he, he stood in the corner in the early stages and allowed this fellow to tee off on him. Maybe the signs of a long, hard career taking their toll on Macklin, hopefully not. He's in with an opponent who looks fresh, strong, and very hungry. Highland continues to be on the front foot here, just working away. Just non-stop from him. He just can't match the energy of Highland there. I mean, I said as early as the second round, he was uncomfortable with the pace, and he can't use his experience to do anything about it. And he's mixing his shots up as well, Highland. seen Matthew Macklin effectively working some borderline body shots there but this referee was lenient towards Macklin now he's lenient towards Highland the Highland just taking it away from Macklin it just takes it away from him whenever he decides and this crowd will get behind anything that Macklin does even if it misses as it did there and they sense it they sense what we're seeing Highland slowly but surely beating the fight out of Matthew Macklin here this has just become a huge struggle for Matthew Macklin. It's been a tough career, he's been in some tough fights. He can only go to the well so often. That was nice from him. Yeah, let's not count him out yet, Jim. He's a big puncher and he's got a huge heart as well, and that was a decent response from Macklin, but again, Highland just comes back with more. It's as though when he produces something, like he's dragging it out of himself, there's nothing flowing from, from Macklin, as we've seen it in the past. I said earlier, some fighters go into their 30s, they change style a little bit. Matthew still wants to do it the way of old, and maybe he just doesn't have the tank to do that. Oh, Corden with a beautiful right hand there. Macklin, and again, Highland. Doesn't seem to be true, too troubled. A bit more of that. We'll do Macklin a world of good. Yeah. He's continuing to work the body here, Highland, and Macklin again looking for a response as it's becoming a bit scrappy and a lot of holding and spoiling going on. Highland still looking the stronger of the two, still pushing Macklin back onto his heels. Well, a very subdued arena here. And just to our left, Jamie Moore, a good friend, of course, of Matthew Macklin. I'm sure he's watching with anxiety, too. This is turning into a tough, tough night. Dead level after four on the cards, remember. But how's it gone since? Let's hear from his former trainer, Jamie Moore. But Jamie is turning into a real tough fight, this one, Matthew Macklin, isn't it? It is, yeah. I've got it leveled, to be honest. I've got it three apiece. Although there was one round which could have gone either way. So, listen, he, he looks like he's going to go into the trenches. He's wrestling a lot on the inside, and, and I don't think he should be doing that. He started off real sharp, jabbing upstairs and, and stabbing that right hand downstairs, taking the steam out of Haaland, whereas now he's switched it up and, and he's coming up the right uppercut up on the inside, which is leaving him open for the left-hand counter. 
So I think he should be coming straight down with the right and the left up over the top, which would have more um, success. But Hale has got some engine on him. He's the younger, fresher guy, and I don't think he should be wrestling with him on the inside. So I think he should bring it back to the beginning if he's fresh enough and try and keep it from the outside, stabbing it downstairs. Thank you, Jamie. I've got to say, I've got Highland up. Yeah, thanks, Ed. Well, if it was level after two, the best case you could make is for Macklin being level at this point. Well, well I'm actually scoring at the same as, as Jamie Moore. I have a few rounds of peace. I thought Macklin produced some good work in the early rounds, although, you know, he, he was kind of forced to respond. But the trouble is, if you look at the scorecard, that has really swung in Highland's favour over the last two rounds. He seems to be the one with the energy levels are good left hand from him. And and he's dictating the pace and he's in the driving seat. And remember, Jim, you have Highland winning the last two and he's certainly started off fast here. If the judges have him winning the last two, he's 4-2 up here and he is threatening to break through. Matthew Macklin, who is facing a real crisis, looking very tired, not much coming back for him from him either. Highland looking to try and pick him off. Macklin desperately trying to cover up. The tank looks dangerously close to empty here for Matthew Macklin. And his defences, which were so tight in the early rounds, have been scattered now. That was better. Good uppercut. But the balance, by that left hook. the balance isn't there, Nick, so there's no real snap in the punches. You know, he's looking heavy legged. And Highland coming through everything. I mean, he's just pouring the punches at him, Highland. So these little responses from Macklin, not really going to impress anybody, I'm afraid. Continuing just to work at an intense pace here, Highland. And a telling off for Macklin. Well, that's, that's the first bad sign if he's got to grab hold. I mean, I don't think I've ever held Matthew Macklin been warned for holding before. Another sign that things are not working for him. Look at the taste again, this guy Highland. can it, box It's that. relentless from him. And in some of the earlier rounds, Jim, there's that right hand getting through, the right hook got through, in some of the earlier rounds, Jimmy, he was missing with a lot of these punches, so many more are getting through now as the defences start to start to open up from Macklin. Yeah, and Macklin is, a, you know, he's almost at you know, walking pace now, you know, he's just there to take the punches, that was better from him, good response, but it hardly cancels out the amount of punches he's taken away, a big left hand from Highland. He's going for broke here, Macklin, and Highland, though, is going with him. Well, we always knew Nick, this was going to be a tough night for Macklin, but we didn't envisage this. He this looks, is turning into a nightmare. He looks desperately tired, Jim. It's Macklin that needs to hear the bell here. A solid right hand again. Highland, though, just takes it. No backward step from him. Tough, tough night. And again, Macklin taking the initiative, the crowd getting right behind him. But that's another one the Argentinian did very, very well in, and he knew it. He gave a little wave as he walked back to his corner. And sometimes catch up all right. He's throwing them left hands now and you're catching up. You've got to come out of that shell now. And as soon as he throws that back, boom, let the right up go. Boom, bam, 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 bam. Go go into, go into the one shot, son. As it comes out, slip, bang. Bring the upper cut up and let the right hand. You've got to let them counters go now on them right hands. Go on, high five hands. So if he comes round the side now, you've got to let that left hook go as well. Highland bang, has you understand? Hold your feet, Michael come back. Michael certainly cannot. Yeah. Match that. Suck it up. So he's going yeah. to have to come up with something now. else. Well, he's going to have to me. do it with power, cleverness, experience. Because he cannot right match the pace. And this guy, as accurate, has really improved over the last three rounds. There's a body shot, which is the last thing you need when you're struggling already. You look at the record book, and it's a shock to find that Matthew Macklin and Jamie Moore is eight long years ago. And another Southpaw ground Matthew Macklin down and stopped him. Well, we're going to see the same again here. Or can Macklin regroup, do what Joe Gallagher was talking about, bring in the right-hand counters? Is Highland going to give him the time to throw any counters? It's just a whirlwind in there. 
Yeah, I mean, is Macklin hoping that maybe the storm will subside and the pace will slow? There are absolutely no signs of that. A couple of clean and left hands he's landed there, and Highland's just walked straight through him. Yeah, I mean, Highland just looks the boss. Some nice little responses from Macklin. But he's pushed back, waving him in there. There's a nice uppercut. Highland took it well. And when's this going to start playing into Matthew Macklin's mind? I'm hitting him with good stuff, and it's having no effect. We will go to the cards again at the end of round eight. Remember, level on all three cards after four, 38 apiece. Let's see what the cards say at the end of eight. This is a bit better from Macklin. Can he keep it going? Can he slow this man down? That's better. Missed with the uppercut. But he's having some success here, Macklin. And then Highland tags him with a straight left hand. No, Macklin produced some good stuff. But the Highland has just walked through it, taking charge again. Huge effort in this round from Macklin, but nothing that he has done has inconvenienced this fellow in the slightest. Nice inside work again from Highland. It's amazing looking at Highland that he's been, apart from Sebastian's big fight, he's been outpointed three times pretty comfortably by uh, mediocre level opponents. But Macklin has never been able to subdue him. And here he is under intense pressure again on the ropes. A man who just doesn't stop throwing punches. You know, he's just taken the best that Macklin could offer in that round. A good little spell from Macklin. But looking flat-footed and forcing his boxing. Good shot there, though. But nothing has an effect, Jim. Nothing seems to bother. Jorge Sebastian Highland, big right hand. Highland just plows straight on. Macklin celebrates to try and get the crowd into it as much as anything. Towards the end of this round, we should hear the scorecards. Four rounds, Matthew. Everything that you've done in the camp, this is where it's happening. Them slips are working lovely. Them catch and returns are working lovely. All right? Joe Gallagher. He's falling in on his shots. He's got a ball. Just tries to refocus Macklin, who looks desperately tired. Well, they forced a lot of good work out of himself in that round. The Highland come right through it. Tell you something, Jim. Say what you like about Macklin. He is putting everything he's got into this fight. Ladies and gentlemen, after eight rounds, the scores are 77 to 75. 77 to 75 in all cards for Highland. There's the confirmation. Highland, two rounds up. Everybody in the auditorium knows it. All three judges, 77, 75, in favor of the man in the orange trunks, Jorge Sebastian Highland. Yeah, well, unfortunately, right now, I agree with the judges. No, he's just there, uh, he's bossing the fight. He has the energy. He answers everything that Macklin can throw at him, and Macklin must have taken a lot out of himself. And in, it's, the, it's, in the momentum, previous round. it's momentum as well, Jim, because I had Macklin winning the first two. So if you take those two out of the equation, it's been a very, very good few rounds this for Highland. Uh, these are kind of tired looking punches we've just seen from Macklin there. Block, good shot, was blocked though. The body shot got through. And again, all kinds of stuff coming from Highland, but he finished so well. He threw six or seven punches, the last two getting through. Uh, Macklin caught pulling away from the punches there. He's making basic mistakes. We don't see him making. This guy's engine is incredible. It really is. Can he keep it going for the full 12? So far, no signs at all of slowing down. It's 
what you'd expect tactically from a, a younger, fresher fighter against a guy who's been through a few wars and a guy who, as I say, there is some history of falling apart late in Matthew Macklin's career. See, having tough fights early, you know, got Macklin ready when he reached the world level. But, I mean, they all put miles on the clock. And at this stage, at 32, they start showing themselves. Oh, terrific right hand. hand. Highland was stood up for that. Can Macklin build on that? Highland straight back on him, though. Oh, I'm not sure Macklin can hit him much better than that. That was clean, that was a beautiful punch. He cannot land any cleaner than that. That really must be heartbreaking for Macklin. That was a beauty. He's got to find another just like it. Another borderline body shot coming in. This referee letting him get on with it, which is good. He's been a good referee, actually. He's just let us. Solid lit uppercut from Highland. Yet the referee just let him go on with it. It's yeah. been rough, it's been tough. But nothing dirty and nothing dangerous. And again, the pressure just keeps on coming. Marked up around the eyes, reddening on the bridge of the nose. Jamie Moore suffering along with every Matthew Macklin fan in this arena. And Highland at the end continuing to stalk him. Jamie, how much is he suffering? Let's find out and join Ed. Well, Highland just relentless. What advice can the corner give to Matthew Macklin at this stage? Yeah, I mean, at this stage of the fight, um, he should be catching him on the ropes and then countering the shots. He's trying to do it, but, he, you know, he, he look, he's looking tired now, Matt. And, um, a lot of the snaps coming yeah, out of Matt's work. Yeah, exactly, and Halen, just like, as you said, he's relentless, doesn't stop. But as he's throwing those shots, that's when you've got to catch him and counter him over the top while his guard's not there. Um, it doesn't look quite sharp enough to do it, but I'm hoping that round was a sort of like, this is where we, we pick up and we drive on all the way to the 12th round, but, you know, it's going to be a hard task to... Halen looks like he's got a great engine, as we thought he would do, so fingers crossed he can push on now, but I've got him a couple of rounds down. It's tough, isn't it? Back to you, Nick. Yeah, thanks, guys. Well, if you gave that round to Jorge Sebastian Highland, who is up off his stool very early indeed, he is three rounds up with three to go. The mathematics very simple. Macklin needs all three rounds just to get a share of this. We shouldn't do him any good, Nick. You know, the, the championship stays where it is on a draw. And, uh, I mean, even struggling to get a draw here, you know, wouldn't set him towards a world title fight, would it? He needs a knockdown. First, he's got to start winning a couple of rounds. It's been a while since that happened. And straight on him again. You know, said, said in the early stages, Nick. Oh, got him. And he's been wiped out. Single punch, no count. Disaster for Matthew Macklin. Delight for Jorge Sebastian Highland, who celebrates. But all the air just got sucked out of this arena. And that was a shattering finish for Matthew Macklin. And is that the end? of what's been a terrific career. That was a nasty knockout. Yeah, Nick, I think Macklin is near exhausting. He's given it everything he has, and when you're exhausted, your punch resistance is not what it normally is. And that was a beautiful right hook from the south post stands, banging the chin. And you knew the way he collapsed to the floor, and the corner, they knew the fight had turned away from him without much hope of it coming back his way again. As soon as he, he landed on the floor, you could see Macklin's brother in letting everybody know it was over. Terrific punch to finish it, but Macklin just could not at any time match the energy, the freshness and the youth and strength of Highland. Highland, he's not a special fighter, but I tell you what, he'll take a bit of beating. Well, this is a sad sight. A sight that nobody likes to see, nobody certainly that knows Matt, Matthew Macklin and has enjoyed his career. A career that goes back all those years, and he put so much into this gym, the preparation, the motivation, everything was there, everything was right. He thought he had a chance of stopping this fella, he thought he could be the first guy to actually stop this guy, but he could just never get him under control, and this finish, wicked. Yeah, and as I say, when you're tired, you know your punch resistance is gone, and you would not be caught any cleaner than that.
he was throwing a punch of his own and the way he collapsed to the floor and you can see that the way the corner wrapped up around him they knew the fight was over thundering punch there to finish the job what a terrific performance you know we, we feel so sorry for Matthew he's given everything in his career with a bit of luck he would have been a world champion but uh, we pretty much know like, where he goes from here I don't see him wanting to go on world title was his dream and that's just been taken away from him and his dream remains very much intact if Miguel Cotto does indeed move down that WBC belt becomes vacant and that guy is well placed to have a shot at it well let's hear this one officially from the MC Ladies and gentlemen, in 42 seconds in the round number 10, your winner by KO and still the WBC International Middleweight Champion, Jorge Sebastian Hoyland. Well, that's not what they wanted to hear here in Dublin, but good applause for a worthy winner as well. Jorge Sebastian Highland of Buenos Aires shatters the dreams and the aspirations of Matthew Macklin, who gets sympathetic applause from a crowd who I suspect, like the rest of us, wonder what on earth is next for Matthew Macklin. We'll be back in Dublin in just a couple of moments. Disaster in Dublin, Matthew Macklin stopped in 10 rounds. Oh, Bernard, you said this was going to be a tough task uh, at the top of the night. I never expected that, to be honest. I, I thought this guy would come to fight, but he looked so cool and calm when he got into that ring, you know, after his entrance. You know, I started thinking, you know, this guy fancies his chances. Um, I never thought he'd do, I never thought he'd bully. Um, I never thought he'd bully Matthew. I watched a couple of his fights, and he never he never showed me any of that. And I thought Matthew Green he could take four or five rounds, and then he get his then he get this guy's number. Then he started to pick his shots. The left hook would start to work. But Matthew just looked tired. He just yeah, looked, he's tired. He's he just, tired from the off. Matthew, 32 years old. Uh, uh, 27. He just outpaced him. Yeah. He was. He just didn't stop working, and that was it. Yeah. Harlan controlled the pace and, and with the career Matthew's had and at 32, some of the tough fights, it was important that Matthew controlled the pace and it, Highland just didn't allow him. He was on him from the start, did not stop round punches and took Macklin's best punches. Matthew too. allowed him to have the distance. He allowed, he allowed Highland to control the distance and get that long left hand up. Yeah. I thought Matthew should have got a lot closer, put his head on Highland's chest and walked in here, brought it down to the trenches. What would that have been because Ireland, uh, he was light on his feet, he, could, he, he had that bounce, he had that pace, he, he could find it, he just looked the younger fighter. Might you just need to either, either lie on the ropes or lie on top of this guy and bring him right down to his level and, and make him work, make him fight. Well, let's hear from Matthew now and his team. Well, Matthew, thanks for joining us. You've seen the doctor. First of all, how are you? Yeah, fine, you know, I was more fatigued than anything because even though it was a good shot, it was an accurate shot to put me down. It wasn't like a heavy concussive hit where I didn't know where I was. It was just, I'd, I'd been fit, tiring for probably for two or three rounds before that, really, truth be told. So what went wrong this evening for you? Um, I don't know, really. I'd probably maybe burn up a bit too much energy early on. Maybe I'm getting old, I don't know. <laughs> I'll have to, uh, you know, just got out of the ring, I'll have to look back and assess it. But you know, I felt okay, like I could read his shots. It was almost like his shots were slow. The shots that hit me was almost like it was slow. And I didn't think he was going to hit me and it hit me. Do you know what I mean? It was kind of, you know, a lot of fighters be able to tell you. Sometimes when it's more, it's quicker, you're like, <laughs> you know, you're anticipating it. Well, that was kind of almost like, oh, I'm all right here, bang. Oh, no, I'm not. You know what I mean? And uh, he, got, he caught me a nice shot, timed it well. And, uh, but I felt okay to continue, but he said the ref stopped it. You know, whatever, you can't argue. I was, I was tiring at that stage. You're a veteran. It seemed like he was fighting at the four-round pace, but was able to sustain it. Yeah, the younger man, and maybe I probably put a bit too much into the early rounds. Probably loaded up with some, you know, backhands that was hitting the gloves. A big right long lead right hooks as well. You know, though he, when he was blocking, and I'm probably taking more out of me than I was out of him. You know, even though I'm the one on the attack. So, yeah, look, I probably made a few kind of novice mistakes like that. But uh, this one, you got to give him credit. He stepped up well. He stepped up hot on the pace, and uh, he was the younger, fresher man. And you know, I was. I was you know, it was a few weeks preparing. I could have liked a bit longer, really, but uh, no, no, I can't take nothing away from me. Fought a smart fight, and uh, 
when he upped it, I wasn't able to, and, and that, that was probably the difference. You had success with the right hand, but you maybe neglected your left a little bit. You never seemed to find the timing for your left hook, which is one of your great punches. Yeah, I did definitely neglect it. I think I went a bit. Right, I had a lot of success early with the right hand, I think, and then I went a bit right hand happy. So, yeah, I think you're right. That was definitely one of the a technical, tactical mistake I made. But I think all in all, I probably just faded a little bit, and uh, I don't know if I peaked it wrong or maybe you know, maybe he upped it at the right time. And after you know, look back and analyse it a bit more after. Trainer Joe Gallagher. Did everything go okay in camp? You were happy with the way Matthew was firing during training? Say that again. Were you were happy with the way Matthew was in training for this fight? Yeah, definitely. He did everything. He had great sparring with Craig McEwen. Um, tactically wise, the shots that we worked on, first few rounds, Matthew did everything covered, covered. Seen everything that was coming, catch, returned, slipped, made the spaces, but wasn't couldn't pull that trigger quick enough to exploit the mistakes that happened. But I thought he did really well. The kids set a high tempo, and I said to Matthew, you've got to use your wise, hold him, tug him, get a breather, and um, hopefully have took the, the engine and brought him down a peg or two. But listen, he's 26, he's a good fighter. We all said beforehand it was a dangerous fighter. They had stupid odds for this fight. I said to him beforehand it was a dangerous fight, but listen, that's it. I know you won't make any hasty decisions, Matthew, and you'll go and look at the tape, but... How do you feel right now about your future as far as boxing is concerned? Well, obviously, that's, that's a fight that I'd, I, I thought I'd be, you know, I need to be beating. If I'm as good as I was, definitely. Uh, so I'd, 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 I'd have to look at the performance. There's a few things in the build-up. You know, I had no excuses, really. I was fit, I was in good shape, I had decent sparring. So, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll have to analyse the performance. And, you know, what am I now? I'm, I'm getting on. <laughs> I'm not old, but I, certainly I'll have to look at the... Uh, see where we go from here. But, um, you know, credit to you, I don't want to take nothing away from him when he boxed a good fight he stepped it up when he needed to and you know when I tried to I paid the price got caught so you know take nothing away from him it was a good performance and uh, yeah I'll have to I don't make any haste decisions, but certainly I believe you know at my best I'm world class capable of winning world title so I'll have to uh, see where I go from here definitely you've always given such good value for money I'm sure you want to go off now and get some rest backstage and see the doctor will have a quick word with Eddie if that's all right yeah. unlucky Eddie what does the future hold for Matthew as far as you're concerned? Oh, listen, that's, that's up to Matthew to decide. It's been a, a credit to the sport. And again, you know, always in entertaining fights. Um, you know, you have to see where he goes from here. Obviously, he wanted to challenge for another world title. And we knew coming into the fight that, you know, I, I looked at the odds going into the fight. Bookmakers are miles out. Highland was a real threat. He was the one coming in with form. He was the one coming in with freshness. He was the one who had plenty of desire. Matthew's always going to have... Uh, bundles of desire and heart, but sometimes your timing's not quite what it was. So he's got to go away and look at his performance with Joe. But you know, he's, he's a credit to the sport, has been, will be, whatever he that chooses to do. And uh, you know, it's tough to walk away, but you know, sometimes you look at the performances and, and have to analyze it for yourself. But uh, he'll always have plenty of heart and, and full credit to Highland. We knew how difficult it was, but they're the guys you've got to beat if you want to go and change for the world title. How good do you think Highland is? I knew how good Highland was. You know, these guys are underrated. We knew he threw plenty of punches, very tough. Like I said, very, very fresh. Now, this was a big opportunity for Highland, and, and I knew how tough this would be. But again, you know, if, if Matthew wants those big names, he has to be dealing with people like Highland. And the argument is, is that, you know, a year, two, three years ago, he would have been dealing with people like Highland. And you need those kind of fights to see if you're still at that level. And he's shown that tonight he wasn't because Highland was very, very good. And it's going to be tough for him to, you know, to look at. But he's very bright, and you know, he, he's been around the sport a long time. He knows what's best for Matthew Macklin. Um, you know, it's disappointing to see him lose, and a great turnout here tonight. He wanted to box in Ireland so badly, and we'd loved him to get the win. So you now he'll go away, and um, you know, whatever he chooses to do, I'm sure will be the right decision that he makes. But uh, full credit to Ireland. Ireland impressed the fans here in Ireland. Would you bring him back over, or maybe to England? Yeah, I'd love to do him against John Ryder. You know, I think um, another middleweight coming through. You saw Spike O'Sullivan. You know, look great tonight. Highland's a very, very good fighter. You know, that was an eliminator for the WBC title. You'll probably see him moving the top three now to WBC, and he'll be making noise himself. So that was a big night for Highland. And um, yeah, if we can bring him over, he, he's very entertaining, throws plenty of shots, and uh, he'd be welcome again. Thank you. Wow. Um, let's strip the meat off the bones down. We saw the pace uh, of Matthew Macklin. We saw the pace of Highland. We usually see Matthew Macklin taking the pace of a fighter. Do you think we've seen the best of him now? I think so, yeah. It, you know, he said it himself, Eddie's just said it there. If he's looking to challenge for world titles again, he's got to be taking care of opponents like that. Don't get me wrong, he was no mug. He was there, he's on form. He's, I think the last calendar year, he's, beat, he's uh, revenged two of his defeats. So he was going in there with confidence. But, you know, like you say, the, the freshness played a big part there. You know, he faded and uh, the, well, the, the age, 26. 
Well, Maxi hit him. He never discouraged him yeah. whatsoever. And he was saying there that he was tiring. When he was letting the punch go, he was tiring. When it should have been the other way around, he was on yeah. the attack, but he was getting tired. And, uh, you know, I think, you know the, the signs aren't great, I think. It's so disheartening when you hit somebody. And Maxi did hit this guy as hard as flush. he could. Flush. You can hit you know, him flush. And he just stood up, smiled, and walked forward. You know, that disheartens you. That takes, that zaps energy from you. Matty said he should be dealing with opponents like this. Do you think he underestimated Harlan? Yeah, I think he did. Um, I, I definitely underestimated him because I never saw that performance in Harlan. Having watched him and I watched a couple of his fights. But I, I never, I, I just, that, that's the performance of a lifetime so far, I'd say, for Harlan, having watched his fights. Like, his left hand was so accurate. Like, he was hitting Matty. Was that Matty's fault? Was that Harlan's accuracy? Was a lack of head moving from Matty? I don't know. Okay, let me see if I can put you on the spot. If you were working with Matthew Macklin, you're in his, in his camp after that performance, he's got his dreams. What advice would you give him, Darren? I, you know, it's a tough one, really. I think it's a decision he's got to make himself. What is so disappointing is, you know, when he, when he fought Sturm, he, he beat Felix Sturm there, uh, and he should be known as a world champion. I mean, it was a lovely shot, but like Matthew said, it wasn't a concussive one-punch knockout. It, I think it was more due to him, the fatigue, and he was tired, and I think that was that played a big part. It did play his part. It's up to Matthew, whatever he does. You know, his next step is Matthew's, Matthew's decision. And Matthew feels fresh enough to keep going, keep going. It's, it's down to want as well. OK, let's see. Is it over at world level, at least? There's some domestic On that performance, there, yes. It's over at ward level. Well, I don't think Matthew will drop down a level. He, he's, he's, all he cares about is winning that world title. He won't drop down a level, so if that's the case, he won't box again. As I'm saying, fighters got pride. Some fighters are happy to go on and be yes. journeymen in this game. Yeah. Matthew's not that kind of guy. No. Matthew's, okay. Matthew's also had three really hard fights in his last six fights. Strom, uh, Martinez, Golovkin. They were tough, tough battles. And he took a lot of punishment on those. Maybe that's had an effect, and that's wearing him down. Could be tempted by somebody like Andy Lee. If he dangles that carrot. I don't know. They're, they're big fights. They're big fights. There, there is still big fights out there for him because he is so entertaining. But I, 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 I personally don't think he'll carry on after that. So then again, I couldn't hear you loud. I just don't think he'll carry on after that. There's some big fights for him out there, but I just don't think he'll carry on after that. Andy Lee wins the world title. God knows what could happen. OK, um, I think Ed's with uh, Jamie Moore. That's right, and I know you found that quite distressing to watch at the end, didn't you, Jamie? I did, yeah. You know, me and Matt are close, and uh, that, was, that was horrible to see, to be honest. You know, we, the last few rounds there, he, was, he wasn't doing much. He looked tired, and Halen was on top, putting the pressure on. I'd never, I never saw that sort of ending, to be honest with you, because Matt's got a good chin. And um, we caught him beautifully. You know, great shot. You've got to give him credit, as Matt said. Um, he looked tired, whether that was being, you know, he's had a couple of long camps back to back. The incident with what happened with me, we had the Daniel Gill fight fall through. So he has had back to back camps, continuous training for a long time, and maybe that was an effect. We don't know. But he's going to have to assess that himself. He's going to have to go away and, you know, have a good think about it because he's 32 now. And if, you know, that was his really probably his last chance or last ambition at world level. I'm gutty for him, to be honest. I'm, you know, I'm a bit lost for words, um, and I just, I, I just want him to go away, have a rest, have a good think about it, and just see, assess his future. Because, you know, first and foremost, I, I, I care for him, not about his career, for him, and I just want him to, to make the right decision. You're close. He trusts you. If he asks for your advice, what will you say? I'll tell him to go away, have a good rest, and then I'll tell him to come back, go in the gym, see how he feels. He'll know, instinctively he'll know how he feels. If he feels like he wants to go, I'll back him. But I'll also take a close look at him, if he wants me to train him, that is. Um, and if he decides to hang him up, then I'll back him 100%. And I'll sit down and watch our fight and, and all his fights and all my fights and have a laugh and a, and a pint of Guinness with each other. If he does walk away, he'll be proud of everything he's achieved, which is basically clearing up apart from winning that world title. Yeah, exactly. I mean... He'll always be remembered for our fight, but, but also for the, for the robbery in Germany against Felix Sturm. I believe he won that fight by a couple of rounds, and, and it, you know, he'll always probably look back on that and, and be spiteful about that in the future. But listen, let's not talk about him being finished. There could still be big domestic fights from out there. If he goes away and assesses and feels good, he wants to come back. Let's see how he feels. Listen, it's up to him, but I'm first and foremost his mate, and I want him to make the right decision for himself.
Thank you very much, Jamie. Back to you, Johnny. Wise words from a friend, uh, former trainer, and disaster, but I'm sure he'll make the right decision. It's been, been a busy night in Dublin. Let's turn our attention to next Saturday as our rivals Nathan Cleverley and Tony Bellew clash. going to be a long, painful night. I've spanked him once, and I'm going to spank him again. Right now, and there's a host of programming and a build up from Sky Sports. We start with a look at the big fight tactics, then we go behind the ropes with both fighters. That's on Tuesday and Wednesday. Thursday's ringside includes the press conference, and then Friday's final countdown featuring reaction from the lively way. Then it's fight night. Will it be repeat for Cleverly or revenge for Bellew? Smith. McDonald, Quigg, DeGale, Rose, and Joshua on a bumper night. That's 6 p.m. next Saturday, a special event on Sky Sports Box Office. Ed, that's going to be some night. I'm really looking forward to Cleverly Bowie. I was just thinking about Joe Gallagher then and the roller coaster life of working in boxing. So he finds out Anthony Quella's fighting for the world title in the last 48 hours. He's got to go through his fight. They're all worried about that. And then the devastating defeat by Matthew Macklin. That's tough to take. And then he's got to get himself up to work with Callum Smith in a really crucial fight next week on the undercard. He's got a, a test against the former world title challenger, Nikolaj Shukleka, who's 36 years of age, but very dangerous. And, and then obviously Callum's mother, sorry, grandmother passed away last week. It, it's tough, isn't it? Just trying to... Do you think, do you think Callum's got the toughest test out of all? He could well have, because he's so inexperienced, only been a pro two years. I think uh, we expect Anthony Joshua to win, and win impressively, because he's looked so good. But, I can't get away from the fact that uh, Mark Antonio Perriban's a decent test for James DeGale, a poten potential banana skin. I think George Groves expects the win, expects the win by knockout against this mama's boy. <laughs> but there's something for everyone with the card. Nathan Cleverley, uh, uh, of course, and uh, Antonio Bellia, that's, that's when the, the big one's going to be. How are you playing that one? <laughs> You're sat on the fence. Yeah, I was sitting here. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know, I, I'm just looking forward to an entertaining fight, to be honest. You know, it's um, both of them have talked a fantastic game and they, they've built it up really well. Talk is it's, cheap. It, Come it, on, it, it is. It is um, I think Benny's got the fire in his belly, belly this time. I think Benny will pull it out. I might sit on the fence with him, mate. <laughs> I mean, the consensus seems to be cleverly on points or Bellew stoppage KO, so pick one of them. <laughs> okay, okay, remember, there's a couple of. Uh, the fighters on the undercard, apart from the top of the bill, who are you most looking forward to? Right, uh, Ed said there, the James Agal fight, there's a potential uh, banana skin there, he's, he's no mug, so uh, that, 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 that's a good fight I'm looking forward to. The rest seems to be quite formalities, but you know, it, there's boxing, anything can happen, but uh, as, a, as a show, the card's unbelievable and I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, the bill's a fight fan's dream. No, I, don't, I can't believe you didn't make him make a decision, an actual decision. Oh, no, he's not going away with it, yeah. The Bill's you know, a fight fan's dream. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's, um, come here, it's, it's, I, I look forward to seeing Anthony Joshua actually step up and step up and step up, you know, he's, he's exciting boxing again, he's, he's bringing it back, he's bringing, you know, he's bringing something back to the heavyweight division and, and getting normal people in the street starting to talk about it. That's exactly right, we work in a little bit of a bubble, but when you see Anthony Joshua kind of do's where the public are allowed to attend, the queue for people just trying to get a selfie with him is unbelievable <laughs> and he's patient and he's, he's, he waits for everybody, but he's got that crossover appeal, hasn't he? I think the thing with the Bellew Cleverly fight is how much the weight is a factor, because obviously Cleverly won last time and he probably won by a couple of rounds despite Tony Bellew complaining about it, and it's whether Tony Bellew is better as a cruiserweight or Nathan Cleverly can also be better. You don't well. think his pace will make a massive difference? 
Dudley's pace. It, it could be that Nathan Dudley, having built himself up to cruise away, it could slow his pace a little bit. And we just don't know who's more heartbroken by their losses at world title level to Donna Stevenson and Sergei Kovalev, respectively. My gut feeling is that Tony Bellew just maybe is a little bit more for this fight than he did for the first fight. It makes it very, very even, really. At least we've kind of got an answer out of it, Ed. <laughs> I, lean on, towards boys. I lean towards Bellew. Yeah. Come on, boys, give me something. Oh, honestly, I, I know you, you want an answer from me. I just don't think I've got one for you. I'm split. I am so split. One, one, one morning I wake up, I'm saying cleverly, the next is Bellew, you know. But, but Club is, has he got the, the defeat from Kovalev out of his system? I don't know. Or has Tony Bellew got in under his skin? I don't know. It's, uh, it's, it's so interesting. It's, it's so difficult for me. You know, I, I'm supposed to be giving you an answer, but I'm Are struggling you to. Are you that? <laughs> Are you that? You two that? would make beautiful politicians. Oh. You, you do, you're doing really well there. <laughs> Boys, thank you. Thank you, Ed. It's been disaster in Dublin for Matty Macklin, but what a fight, what a night, and what a crowd. Sky Sports Live. On all screens, on the go, and the best bits on demand.